Continuing on with Streamlit, let's get into a little more complicated of examples that we looked at before. If you want to review what we did before, take a look at 10.1. The link to all of this is in the description. Again, I'm assuming that you're using OpenAI and that you have your key set up in here. You want to put your key into the OpenAI key secret there. That keeps you from accidentally uploading your key to the internet if you distribute this, your notebook. So here we are going to run this application. So this application is going to just calculate a loan amortization table. So if you're, to, if you're dealing with, say, a home loan, a car loan, the amount of money that you pay each month stays stable through, say, the whole five-year or 30-year loan. It's the same amount each time. But what's happening is the principal amount, so the amount that you're paying to your loan is very small and it's mostly interest at the beginning and by the end it's almost all principal and just a little bit of interest. That's how they basically keep it flat because at the beginning you're paying for interest for the whole life of this very long loan so your, your interest is naturally going to be much much larger in the beginning of the loan. This is why doubling down and paying more at the beginning will really save you some, some interest if you want to do that. But then you have to calculate, okay, is that interest that I'm saving, can I get a better return elsewhere? At any rate, this first part, this is a very standard calculation of an amortization table. Very standardized formula for that. You can find it on Wikipedia or Look at any um, of a million videos that show you how to run through this calculation. So there's nothing unique to AI here. We'll, we'll leave that alone. If you want a description of this specific one, put it into uh, ChatGPT or something like that. It'll tell you exactly how the math behind it works. Here, we are going to title it just like we typically do in Streamlit applications. And we're going to put three controls on the form. Now, when we, as is common with Streamlit, it's coming through here twice. So the first time it's coming through here, it's just building and placing the controls. So these would return none when you first come through here. And we're putting in a, a number and we're putting in a, uh, another number, the loan amount, the interest rate, we're defaulting to 7.5. And percent, and then we're doing the loan amount in years. We're going to assume a 30 year loan, so we're thinking more a real estate loan. Then we're putting in a button. This will initially return none because it's just putting the button onto the page. But then when it comes through the second time, is when you click that button, now we're going to now these will have values in it the second time. So the loan amount will have the value that of the amount that you took out the loan for. And then uh, the, the annual rate and the years. We used to always use 100K for, for the house, but gotta love inflation, now we're doing 300K. So we retrieve this, we calculate the amortization table. Now it's going to return a pandas data frame. Pandas data frames work great with Streamlit. We're gonna print out our monthly payment because we didn't know what that previously was, formatting it with two decimal places, dealing with dollars and cents, kind of US focused, but, and then we, we are gonna display the data frame. So this displays the data frame into the page. And this only gets invoked the second time that you call it when you click that button, assuming that no error occurred. Because if an error occurred, then this button's gonna return none and, uh, you won't you won't do anything. Then we also give another button that lets you download the CSV table if you so desired. So let's run this so that we can see how it works. That does mean we need to run this code up here that I skipped. This is again, assuming that you have your OpenAI key in there. You don't really need it for this first example, but you will need it for the second one. So we're running this first part up here. We'll fast forward through all of this. All right, let's run the rest of the code. 
So now we're going to run this. And again, remember, it's just writing the file. It's not actually running it because the file won't get ran until you do this down here. Now, this is getting us the IP address of our virtual machine node. This is basically just a password for our tunnel. We are going to start the server and establish the tunnel. Because remember, Streamlit is an application server. We're running it through Colab so that we can see it. I've got the previous video, 10.1, shows how to, how to do that. But it's, it's pretty simple. We're just doing that here. You can see the URL that you're given. This never actually stops until you kill the server. But we're going to go ahead and run that. It wants that password that we copy and pasted, which is the IP address. Just a little security here before it lets you into the tunnel. And here's the loan amortization calculator. You can specify your loan amount. You can use the plus and minus to increase it. 7.5 interest rate, 30 year loan. So let's calculate the amortization table. So this shows you as you're going through the life of the loan, making a payment every month, you can see that your you can see what your payment amount is. Only a little bit's going to principal, the rest is going to interest, and then you slowly pay down the balance as you go through this. So this shows you how you can put a table up here using a pandas data frame. We did very minimal on formatting it. I mean, ideally I would probably like to, I would probably remove this and do just dollars because I mean, the, the cents don't really matter a great deal here. Let's look at the next example now for this class. This is gonna show you how to create something that you, you give it an image and it turns it into a cartoon for you. Okay, and I will note that I did restart the complete environment and I did run that script at the very beginning that installs everything. I'd like to completely clean things out before going through entirely different examples of Streamlit. So we're writing the code for this. We'll exp I'll explain this in a moment. It's a little longer. We're going to get our IP address password. Copy that. And then we're going to run this. Okay, let's pop that open. It's going to want our IP address password. We'll click that. And here we are in this application. So we're doing something a little more complicated. We're letting you actually upload a file. So we're going to upload a file. I am going to grab one that I have. It's a picture of me. We will make that into a cartoon. There it's showing you the image that it pulled. That's pretty much me with this, this current background and it's generating, so it's, it's working, creating the cartoon. And you'll see that pop up in just a second. And <laughs> that's me as a cartoon, I guess. Uh, so, but you can see some of the elements. He's got a beard, he's, he's got a whole lot more hair than I do. That, that'd, that'd be awesome. I have not had that much hair since my undergraduate days in college. And then you can download the image if you so desired. I am not going to download him, sorry. <laughs> so let's look at the code necessary to create this. First of all, I created this modify image. We've seen this image from, or this function from earlier in the class for sure. But what's happening here is you're passing in an image and a prompt. This is using two models. First, it's using a multimodal image to, or a model to take in the image with the prompt saying, give me the prompt that would create a cartoon version of this image. And it creates a whole intermediate prompt, which I show you how to extract. You might want to print it out here. It's, it's, it's interesting to see the intermediate prompt for sure. But what's happening is we're creating GPT-40 Mini, which at the time that I recorded this was the most cost-effective model and still capable of doing it. We take the image that we received and we convert it basically just into a Base64 uh, Base encoded object that we're going to basically just put into the text string. And the text string you have here, the message is 
human message and then there's two parts to the human message. We're putting in the normal prompt, but then we're also putting in this base64 encoded image. Now we are going to send the message that we get back. And the message that we get back is the command from that prompt, which is, we'll see it in a moment, it's down further, but it, it's basically asking for a cartoon version of the image that was, that was sent to it. And we're gonna use Dolly to do that. You'll see here we do all the normal Dolly stuff. We're creating a standard one. We could create a higher resolution one, but usually, usually the standard ones are okay. And it wouldn't be higher resolution, it'd be still 1024 by 1024, but it would put more detail in. We get the image URL because it writes these out to URLs and we basically grab it and bring it into a pill image. We also input a pill, a pill image. That's what we're, what we're receiving. Now here's the Streamlit app that we're going to do. The title is Cartoonify Image with Multimodal LLM. We have a control. And again, this is going to go through it twice. The first time that it goes through, it's just putting a file uploader on there, like we saw when we first ran it. The second time through, it is going to have a value for our uploaded image. And here it is going to now obtain that image from, uh, from Streamlit and turn it into a pill image we are going to display the original image. Remember it did that. So we put that, that into the stream. But again, remember on the second time through, this is getting executed. On the first time through, this if would have bombed out and you would not have any, you don't have it yet. And then it writes out that it's generating the cartoon image and it kind of pauses here because it's creating the image. And once we get, once we get that image back, and we get it from this modify image that we're calling. That's the function we just looked at. And we put the image into here and we, we, we make it be the whole width that we have available to us. And then we give the option to download the image if so desired. So here you can see we created a little more complicated of a Streamlit application where we're dealing with images coming back and forth and putting images right sort of into the stream of of the window. So thank you for watching the video and if this was useful please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on anything else that I am putting onto the channel. Thank you for watching.